a curse can only rest when there was vacancy. It means if there was already a blessing, they came late. The blessing got there first. No space. I can't curse who God has blessed. It is not every generation that has curses. It is possible that they look at your entire lineage, father, son, mother, nothing, no finger of the enemy, no foothold for Satan. So what I'm trying to establish to you is that the devil is not the factor. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. And as a child of God, you have the right to live on the earth as if he does not exist. To trample without consequences. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you know what it means? Listen. And that's why, you see, bondage has a lot to do with ignorance. That's what I'm trying to establish. It has a lot to do with ignorance. Because it can never be a tug of war with God. No. If some things are lingering, there are some things you are out of line. You are out of line. A lot of Christians make this mistake. Listen to me. Listen. You see the story of Balaam. It's so powerful and instructive. I've been teaching. I think I've taught on it three times this year alone. Because I think there's a powerful message there. Especially with regards to the prophecy that God has given to us. It's the year to occupy, right? Yes, now listen, the children of Israel had taken Jericho. And now they were close to this new territory. The king of that territory begins to have a paranoia. And so he calls a magician. He said, I am afraid that these people, they will do to us what they did to Jericho. Come and curse them. And so Balaam raises an altar. He tries. Are you listening to me? I'm explaining what will happen if they take your name somewhere. Listen, as all of this was happening, the children of Israel didn't know. They didn't know. They're going about their business, going about their day to day. They don't know about this. And here is someone, unbeknownst to them, trying to curse them. And so he discovered upon trying that there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against just imagine that someone takes your name and upon trying discovers this lineage, no single spell. Nobody has successfully laid a hex on this family. It means it's possible. It is not every generation that has curses. That's what I'm trying to show you. It's not every generation. It is possible that they look at your entire lineage, father, son, mother, nothing, no finger of the enemy. No foothold for Satan. No sickness, no disease. Hallelujah. All the families blessed. All the homes happy. Do you believe? See, that text that we quote, it was not God's people who were saying it. It was a magician who discovered it. There is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither, uh, come on, are you getting what I'm saying? He says, I cannot curse who God has blessed. Let me tell you, you know what that means? A curse can only rest when there was vacancy. It means if there was already a blessing, they came late. The blessing got there first. No space. I can't curse who God has blessed. It means that the blessing of God has a self-protective measure. Whether you are conscious of the enemy or not, whether you are consciously trying to counsel or not, because of the blessing, it has a self-protective measure. But here is another thing Christians miss. Are you ready for this? The story didn't end there. When Balaam saw that he couldn't curse God's people, he came up with another strategy. As long as these people are in their right place, in their right alignment with God, you can never curse them. So let us do something that will bring them out. That's what they did. And so they began to introduce them to strange cultures, to idolatry, to sexual perversions. And God's people stepped out of their covering. Let me tell you something and listen to me well. You know, the reason some arguments will never end in the church is because many times both sides are right. The people who say, in Christ, you can't have a generational cause, is, they are correct. It's true. Even in the Old Testament, it was true. But listen 
can a believer get involved in things that will make him vulnerable? The answer is a big yes. The answer is a big yes. So, uh, so listen, because a lot of people don't get... See, <laughs> don't take things for granted. You know, and the body of Christ, we always move from one extreme to, to the other. You know, it's true that there has been, you know, some movements in the name of spiritual warfare that overemphasize the power of the enemy. You know, and we keep praying in case prayers. You know, I, I call them in case prayers. You say, every power, every power that buried something in my family house. That buried some, is there something buried in your family house you don't know? But you pray it in case. That's what an in case prayer is. <laughs> anywhere they took my name, anywhere they took my name. Did they take your name anywhere you don't know? But you pray it in case. There are prayer points motivated by fear. And prayer points that reveal lack of discernment. You don't know for sure. That there is such a thing, so you just pray all the options so that <laughs> at least one will cancel. It just tells you, see, we talk a lot about power, but we don't really understand it. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? So there has been another extreme, but there is another extreme <laughs> where people even say, in fact, what is curse? What is curse? Go and hustle, see other nations. Are they not making it? Uh, have you heard people talk about talk like that? Huh. It is true that there are some people who are lazy, they won't apply themselves, and they think there is some spiritual factor. But to go to the other extreme and say, no such thing exists. Huh. I want to show you what the word of God says. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. Yes, you are a new man in Christ, but I think that this will give you some perspective. Tamaya. Ay, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I wish there was a public holiday so I won't be breaking this sermon. Is there, is there not something to celebrate? <laughs> Please, are you ready? I'm about to share some very deep things with you. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now! It shall come to pass that if you diligently obey my voice, obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully his commandments, meaning you need alignment. Are you listening to this? That the Lord will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of your God Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. It means, come on, listen, listen. It is true that natural laws apply where seed, time and harvest and cold and heat will never cease. But then there is a blessing that is not tied to any geography. Are you listening to me? You may jack back, but it makes no difference if you don't have that blessing. There is a blessing to be blessed anywhere. Look at it, it's right there. Whether in the city or outside. Blessed! Come on, are you listening to this? And listen, when we read this carefully, you will begin to trace some things. That's when you know some things are not ordinary. Not everybody who is working hard and is not successful, is not smart. Are you listening to me? This is letting you know that there is more to hard work. There is more to hard work. If you notice a pattern in your family, every time almost about to hit something big, then it just falls apart. It may not be ordinary. It may not be ordinary. I mean, it's right there. And then look at what it says next. Are you ready for this next one? Uh, verse 24. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Biological laws apply, but sometimes there is something wrong. Are you listening to me? When you look at one family, four people don't have children. It may not be. I See, listen. Listen to me. I am showing you so that, you see, sometimes when the work of Satan is exposed, it becomes easy. It becomes easy. Listen, I've preached. 
You know, I say lucky, you know, <laughs> God has saved me many times. There are some things you can't preach without signs. <laughs> if you preach it without signs, you'll be in trouble. Because of all places in the world where I was going to say such a thing for the first time, I was preaching in London. This was my first time in London. And the Lord was pushing me, say it, say it. I said, Lord, I parambulated, parambulated, parambulated. And I said, you know what? I have discovered that many times ovarian cyst is caused by the enemy. As I was still talking, thank God for vindication, a demon began to cry out. So then it was clear. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So that, now that was practical. All right, come out. Guess what? She had struggled with it since she was, I think, 14 or something. And it was healed in that service. Her pastor called me, said, I, I am aware of this case. I've been on it for years. And I didn't have to say anything. The, the moment the teaching exposed it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's what I'm trying to do. You just know, oh, this, this is not ordinary. This is, and then you say, enough. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Verse 8. The Lord will command his blessing on you in your storehouses. I am telling you, not every poverty is ordinary. More often than not, people are broke because they are broke. Do you understand what I'm saying? Make no mistake. <laughs> but it's right here now. Look at verse 13. This one will touch you. Verse 13. Everybody read together, want to go. And the Lord will make you what? And not? And you shall be what? Above only and what? Let me tell you something. If a whole lineage is small, it may not be ordinary. Because this is a blessing. It tells you it takes more than hard work to rise. It's a blessing. It's right there. So it just tells you there are some things that the moment you do, you step out of your covering. Are there not people, for instance, who out of desperation, they go to places, so-called solution centers, you know that there is a high likelihood that the source, the power behind this is not God. You go there. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you one easy one. If you ever, directly or indirectly, show allegiance to any idol, you are under a curse. These things attract curses. Let me tell you, was it in this venue or was it deeper? I saw a vision. Someone who was seated at the back who went to a DBR. You know that video, right? And he had demons. I have not seen one person who went to a solution center that is not of God and didn't have a demon. It's an exchange. If they give you something, if you keep something in your house that is not of God, I am telling you, you have strange beings in your house. Instantly. Instantly. I know what I'm saying. I have prayed for people, cast out demons of, from people whose parents went to so-called pastors for solution. And the demon has so much audacity because it was a contract. One said, this is not fair. Okay, I will go. But tell the parents to give me back what I gave them. They came to me for money. I gave them money. They gave me their daughter. The demon was confidently telling us that. In a room full of at least 15 people, all the protocol were there. Pastors were there. Confidently. And as, as I, you know me, my own, I was like, oh, sorry, I was not there. <laughs> the one that sent me say, you shall cast out devils. So, when the, listen, when the demon saw that, because the demon really felt cheated, I told you the spirit realm draws on legality. When the demon saw that he was about to be cheated, pushed her to run to the road so that the car would knock her down. Wait, you wait there. The, I know what I have seen. I've seen too much because the parents were their spirit. And now, let me tell you what they had done. The demon had put in her a fibroid and the plan was when she was about to take out the fibroid by operation, she will die. That was, the demon said it, that that was the plan. Please, are you, are you listening to me? And as the demon is about to leave, looks at me, disappointed and angry. And I said, now because of you, she will have children. Said this in the presence of everybody. Because of you, she will have children. I'm telling you so that you know how big a God is. So you are not to be afraid. Oh. Are you afraid? I'm saying there might be some things, some patterns in your family you need to investigate. 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 Some strange patterns. 
one family, two people with mental breakdown. That, don't you see? Uh, are you getting what I'm saying? Or a long history of suicide. Long history of suicide. One family. Investigate it. Or constantly being prone to accident. Only you. In one lifetime. They say lightning does not strike the same place twice. How can you constantly enjoy your right leg four times? You know, one of the people that, that, that has, was very vocal about this, you know, I think Derek Prince, shared a story. And the reason that story hit me is because I have real life example. He talked about a lady who was a secretary to a wealthy man. But she was already deep in the job before she realized that the boss and his partners belonged to a cult. And they had this lady guru that they submitted to. <laughs> and now she's thinking, how do I do this? So now, well, they gave her something to type, a blessing from the guru that she was supposed to type and send. But just looking at the things they were asking her to type, they were too... <laughs> So she went respectfully and said, please, because of my conviction, I can't type this. And the man appeared to be respectful of her faith and said, oh, well, sorry, you can't do this. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I didn't mean to make you do anything that is inconsistent with what you believe. And that was it. Hours later, her joints began to get stiff until she could almost not move. And then she goes to the hospital, diagnosed rheumatoid arthritis. And now... Just days after, in the bed, her husband cannot even sleep beside her because just any move of the bed, the pain will be so much in her body. And so someone who had been studying about curses and all of that just said, I know a material that you can listen to that will help you. As he got to the part where the pastor was about to pray, the tape jammed. <laughs> she could not rewind. She could not fast forward and she could not remove the tape. You know? <laughs> so she told her friend, you know, I, I can't play the tape. The friend said, Don't worry, I've written out the prayer. I've written. Get correct, friend, you know, yeah. Say, I've written it out. I've written it out. See, let me tell you something. In this warfare thing, if you have people who love the Lord and love you. You know, as I was casting out the demon from that lady, her brother, who wasn't really strong at the time in the things of God, just out of sheer love, you remember? He said, he said you will go. He was, you know, you could tell he was afraid of but my sister. He said, you must go. He said, you You know, the exact same thing happened to my mom. You've heard me share the story. Young lady, vibrant. First and foremost, it started with a dream. She dreamt that someone who visited at a time where we didn't really have money. So she gave her money and the person from her counting, as you could tell, she was disappointed. Now she dreamt and in the dream, she was tied to a tree. And the woman with her friend, she was reporting, this woman, I visited her house. She didn't. Are you listening? And days after, sickness began to creep in. Young lady of 40-something, rheumatoid arthritis. From where? And I told you, my dad called us into the room one day, pointed. My mom had tied all her joints because they were paining. She was groaning in the bed. He said, this woman must be healed today. That was the last. Are you, are you listening to me? From that time, almost. This was about 20, 20, 20, 2006 till now. Are you listening to me? Yes, See, wake up, oh. That lady began to read the confessions, the prayer. By the time she was done, her fingers were straight. By the time she was done. We are up ahead And the world's got to follow we are not afraid we will never ever declare over your family we are up ahead we are up ahead and the world's got to follow we are not afraid cause we'll never ever go to be 
year ends ahead and the world's got to we are not afraid because we will never are you all Never. 